Hey baddies, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Baddest You Podcast. I am your baddie level up coach, Ambria Harty, and in today's podcast episode, we're going over financial literacy, and we have an amazing special guest today, our financial expert, Bree Simmons from Simmons Equity Group, and she is coming on today to teach the baddies financial literacy all about credit, savings goals, high yield savings accounts, all of the above. Before we get into it, make sure you guys check out The Baddest You podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube at The Baddest You. Check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Ambria Harty. And let's get into this week's episode. Well, hi, Bree. It is so good to see you today. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm great, of course. Thank you so much. Of course. I'm so excited to have you today. This is Bree Simmons, MBA. She is an insurance agent, a financial expert, just coach. She's been in the credit agency for over five years. I just am really appreciative for her joining us and sharing her beautiful knowledge with us. What made you start in this industry? Oh, thank you. That's a good question. And it's a loaded question. I have always been terrible at math, believe it or not. Yeah. It was the most daunting subject, but... I guess to make a long story short, as I grew older, I noticed the need for understanding my finances, but I was always afraid to understand my finances because it involved math, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as you get older and I'm a mother of twins, so I have a boy and a girl twin, they're fraternal, Amazing. you know, I have to make, I had to make ends meet for them. And the mm -hmm. part that just wasn't adding up, no pun intended, uh, for me <laughs> was the mm -hmm. fact that I really didn't have control over my finances. And so I didn't have control over my credit. I really didn't understand how the industry worked. So mm. in order to, I guess, fix that problem, I had to learn all that I could know. So I mm. went to a graduate school. I got my MBA in finance. I mm. have been in the credit world for the past five years or more, right? So I've learned a great bit of knowledge from how the, the industry works from there. As I learned more, credit, insurance, and money, you know, they all go hand in hand. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it won't hurt to learn more about the insurance industry because what's all what's it to have all this money if you can't protect it? So they all, mm -hmm. all mesh together. And I'm here to just be the beacon of knowledge because I know how it feels not to understand your finances. So my goal is to pair people with the resources to understand their finances and to feel confident about their financial decision making. That is amazing. Wow. See, my favorite part is how passionate you are because yeah. when you're working with someone who genuinely cares, you can tell that the information that's about to come out their mouth is going to change your life. And I know you're going to change all of the baddies' lives <laughs> today. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out Brie on Instagram and her Simmons Equity Group down below in the description box so that you guys can ask her any questions and check her out a little bit later. I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to get into it, right? Let's go right into let's, it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Why do you think the baddies should learn financial literacy? What is the importance of that? So baddies, it's so important to be in control of your finances. Uh, if you're not in control, someone else is taking a piece of your hard earned money, time, et cetera. So it's, mm -hmm crucial for you to understand what's coming out of your bank account, what's coming into your bank account and, you know, planning ahead so that you don't have to be in a fumble or you don't have to be in a position where you can't afford something. Mm -hmm. So understanding your finances is something that you owe yourself to do, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants a piece of what you have so that they can enjoy their life. So I think mm -hmm. that understanding your finances and taking the step to just learn one or two things could help you for the rest of your life. I like what you said when you said, like, you owe it to yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something I always say in my podcast. Which is just you so do? Crazy. I say it all the time. Very and nice. Thank you. It's very inspiring because it really stood out to me how you said it, that everybody wants a piece of you. But mm -hmm. it's so true. Like, we do have to make sure that we're giving to ourselves in that way to make sure we have a healthy financial world. And I think that young women learning financial literacy is going to change the course of everybody, just society as a whole. I'm just so excited to have you here to be a, an amazing part of that process. I will be learning financial literacy as well. <laughs> <laughs> you're never too right. young too, right? So, yeah. Um, and you're never too old. You know, we all mm -hmm. make mistakes. So don't frown upon your starting point. 
Just start. Mm, just start. That's amazing. See, I was 23 and it's interesting. I saw a video recently. It was like, hey, at 23, like how much savings should you have? And everyone in the comments was like, well, I have $0. I only have $20. I have nothing. <laughs> and I was like, I need to make this episode immediately. Like what? Yeah. And it's crazy. I'm not to say like I'm in the best standing, like I'm 23, right? But what do you think about a young woman stepping into adulthood, how should she be able to start focusing on her finances? You know, without hesitation, budgeting. Okay, mm -hmm. budgeting is crucial. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a certain amount of money to start budgeting, right? Mm -hmm. But budgeting simply, it assigns a job for your money. Okay, so mm -hmm. however much money you have coming in, you know that I'm spending this much on uh, toiletries. I'm spending this much much on car related expenses. I'm spending this much on fun, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you assign your money a job, I think that you'll have a better control or a better view of what's next. Now, without a budget, oftentimes it can cause confusion. It can cause frustration. It can cause mm -hmm. overspending. Okay, budgeting. I resonate with that. Right. <laughs> Overspending. <laughs> I've been there, right? Mm -hmm. So I know I know those feelings, and not everyone feels the same way, but I know some of those emotions that can come with it. Budgeting allows you to think ahead. In the simplest mm -hmm. terms, if you itemize your needs, your wants, you know, there's some things that are just non-negotiable for you, right? For me, I need my hair done and I need my nails done, <laughs> right? Yes. So that goes into my budget as a non-negotiable. Organize what you can't live without, things that you can sacrifice. But that is really the foundation uh, mm. of a lot of this. How would you advise a baddie to create a budget? Where, where's a good place to start? A good place to start is to analyze what you already spend, right? Mm. So mm -hmm. again, quantifying your needs and wants. What is important to you? What can't you live without? What can mm. you sacrifice? What can you downgrade? So mm -hmm. really, you know, if you can, if you have a bank account and you open up your bank account statement and just analyze what you're spending on a monthly basis is mm -hmm. a good start and highlight in different colors. Okay. I need this to live. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was nice to go to that movie here and there. Right. And so you can <laughs> right. Put it in different buckets. And if mm -hmm. you need like a resource tool, definitely reach out to me and I'll have some type of template available for the baddies mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that you guys can get a hedge on that. Make sure you guys check that out. I'll add it to the description box as well. That comes so in handy. I feel like people want to try to use Excel. And these are great resources and tools, but sometimes it can be a little complex for someone that's just starting out. I love Excel, but I also like good old pen and paper, right? Yes. So yes. It also depends on what you're willing to uh, deal with. Is there a specific way they should divide their finances? What should they prioritize when it comes to budgeting? Your needs, your wants, and then an active savings plan mm. and organize it that way. It'll be easier mm. to operate. I was meeting with you at one point and you mentioned this interesting method. I think it was the 50, 30, 20 method. Yes, what what yes. can you explain that to the baddies today? Yeah. Oh man, I you remember this beautiful. When it comes to monitoring your spending, you want to allocate 50% of your income mm -hmm. or the money you have coming in to your mm -hmm. needs, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone's situation is different, but mm -hmm. this is a good rule of thumb. 30% uh, of it go goes to your wants. Okay. Mm. I want my hair done. I want my nails done. I'm going to prioritize that in my budget. And mm. the uh, extra 20% goes to savings. Okay. Mm. Saving is so important. The mm. reason why, why saving is so important is because the value of the U.S. dollar is constantly changing mm. and you need to have a cushion in the case of an emergency, but also you need to plan ahead for yourself mm. and for your future goals and for your family. But again, everyone's situation looks different. Mm. But one thing we know for certain is, is the uncertainty that is to come. So yeah. it's never, <laughs> right. It, it doesn't hurt to put something aside for that uncertainty. They say the only constant in life is change. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. I think it's so smart that we are preparing ahead of time. Right. And that reminds me specifically of savings accounts, right? I've heard of there's high yield savings account. I heard there's like regular savings account. Do you think you could tell us the difference between the two, what you would prefer, how to prioritize them? Yeah. So oftentimes when it comes to a regular savings account, it's a product from the bank that you are you know, dealing with. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you have to pay them monthly for mm -hmm. using that savings account. 
Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll give you like some incentives and they'll say like, we'll give you 0.01%, you know, back. But that is a very low threshold of a return uh, on investment on your money. The mm-hmm. beauty of high yield savings account, because it's, it's actually in the name, high interest rates, giving you money back. It's a, at a higher yield point, at higher interest mm-hmm. rate that you could earn m- money on money that you're already putting to the side. So you're getting money back for putting money away for savings. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's a, it's, it's not a lot of money, but yeah. any money, you know, a little bit is better than nothing at all. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a little bit like investing in a way, teeny bit. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's a, it could be a, considered a form of investing. Yes. Awesome. Do you have any recommendations for banks that can be used for high yield savings account? So this is a loaded question too. And it goes mm-hmm. into like a place of strong advisory And in Mm -hmm. order to be able to give you suggestions, like there are some disclosures and all that that we would have to sign. Mm -hmm. So a a good, easy way to do this, do it is Google it on your own and Mm -hmm. look at the terms and see which one identifies with you the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oftentimes, individuals have bank accounts that Mm -hmm. offer, you know, high yield. So just do a good search on the bank that you use. And if they offer such uh, and then do a comparison. Um, Mm. There's a whole bunch of review based websites that kind of do the hard work for you where they compare high yield savings accounts across, you know, and the features and benefits that come with it. So when we talk about you owe it to yourself, you know, it'll be easy for someone to say, hey, open this, open that. But you want to be informed. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to know exactly what you're getting yourself into, because Mm -hmm. these, these financial products are not one size fit all. Okay. Right. So you definitely want to do that due diligence before you sign that dotted line. Absolutely. I think that's excellent advice. And it really does go to show that it's important for us to figure out our own form of financial literacy, which this podcast episode is going to be amazing, but never stop learning, right? Never stop right. researching, <laughs> never stop figuring out an answer, you know, that easy for watching. Make sure you are doing your own research just to see which bank account resonates best with you. We both recommend a high yield savings over a regular savings account. How can one prioritize what they're spending? Right. Because we know we have expenses to take care of. But let's say somebody wasn't taught financial literacy. They weren't taught what's important, what's not important. Right. If a client came to you and said, hey, I have no idea what I should spend my money on or where I should put it. Like, what would you say? It comes back to what they care about. Mm, Right. What do you love? Oh, what do you what makes you happy? Right. Mm -hmm. What makes you safe? Right. Right. When Mm -hmm. we start to ask those questions, things will uncover. And then, yeah. we, then we can break down the the needs, the mm-hmm. wants, right? And then saving no matter what. Saving should be all automatically a part of the qu- equation, as we mentioned earlier in the conversation, is mm-hmm. because of the fact that life is constantly changing and then we, we need to prepare for that change, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What if your rent goes up 200 bucks? Mm-hmm. Are you, and, and, you know, there are people who have an awesome family base or awesome friend base as a resource where you can borrow, Right. right. But mm-hmm. borrowing becomes hectic sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so we owe it to ourselves. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. To ourselves in a position so mm-hmm. that we would have to, you know, lean on others for help because others also need help. So mm-hmm. the way to prevent or the way to, I guess, be strategic about it is whenever you get some money coming in, put some to the side for the future. You talk about putting money aside for the future. And that actually reminds me of credit cards right (laughs) which is something that a lot of people i think may struggle with because when i hear debt a lot of times it's credit card debt why do people go into credit card debt and what can they do to avoid that how do you effectively use a credit card what is the point of a credit card right all of the above (laughs) wow um and so a lot of people go into credit card debt is because they live beyond their means Okay, mm-hmm. a credit card is not a replacement for now new cash that you can just dispose. Mm-hmm. Okay, a credit card there are it's a gift, right? If you use it the right way, but it can also be a curse. So mm-hmm. the beauty of them, it allows you to purchase goods, services, or your wants and your needs mm-hmm. uh, with the promise to pay back with interest, right? Uh, at a later date, right? Uh, now the curse is just because they grant you that $2,000 limit doesn't mean you should use $2,000 every time you have the (laughs) $2,000 available. (laughs) Right. Okay, so it's suggested to keep your credit card balances low. 
Yeah, uh, I think it's called credit, credit utilization. Very good. Exactly. I learned that from you. <laughs> yes, credit utilization, but it also goes by debt to credit ratio. It also mm. goes by amount owed, right? Mm. So when it comes to your credit cards, you want to use it for necessities, right? Mm. So we talk about your needs and your wants. It doesn't make sense. Okay, yes, you have that $2,000, but that doesn't mean you should run down to the Gucci or the Louis or the uh, or the um, whatever store to mm -hmm. make, purchase a new bag because you have to pay that off over a period of time plus interest. And the mm -hmm. interest that they tack onto that is astronomical. It's almost insane. Right. So when it comes to credit cards, yes, it helps you build credit, uh, which will contribute to your credit score. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit later <laughs> down the line. It will right. contribute to your credit score, but it also can harm your credit score if you're using too much of the limit. So oh, wow. it's best if you don't want to pay interest on your credit cards that you pay it down to zero. But mm. paying it down to zero, anyone can do, right? Yeah. So it's best to keep a little bit of the... 10 to 30% of your limit on your credit card to receive the ultimate benefit of having one that could reflect in your credit score. Mm. I know that was a bit loaded, but I'll No, that was amazing. Okay. No, I think that's awesome. I think the mistake that I made when I first got my credit card was the idea of the credit utilization rate. I didn't, like, um, I think you told me I shouldn't spend more than 30% mm -hmm. because I guess they're tracking, like, if you need a lot, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you need a lot of money, it just shows that you're not maintaining your money well. It just doesn't look good in a, in a credit bureau's eyes. When it comes to, you you can use up to the limit, right? Okay. You mm -hmm. can. However, when you're very close to the limit, okay, lenders are worried that they might not ever get their money back if you don't pay it down in that allotted 30 days. Right. So you become more of a risk to them mm -hmm. if you don't pay it uh, down. Okay. Right. Lenders lend to get their money back plus interest. Mm -hmm. So if you are already at the top of the limit and you haven't paid it down in that 30 days and that 60 days, they become worried that they won't receive their money ever again. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're going to use the credit card, use it wisely. Okay. Right. And the things that you know you can always pay back is the things that you need to live. Hence, mm -hmm. that's why we said, you know, use it for your needs or your necessities. Right. And you were mentioning earlier that your credit card can help you towards your credit score. What's mm -hmm. the point of a credit score? What mm -hmm. should the bad news know? What does a credit score get for you in life? Your credit score is a way to predict your credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. So it's a three digit number that is derived from your credit report. And your credit report is typically uh, seven to 10 years that represents your financial life. Now, if you've mm -hmm. only had credit for a year, it's only going to reflect that year. But some people have had credit longer. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of a credit report is to ensure, or or basically what it is, is it's looking at how you've borrowed in the past mm -hmm. so future people can decide if they want to lend to you to see the probability of you going to pay them back in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the beauty of credit is that you're able to borrow funds from an individual before having to pay a uh, little to nothing up front mm -hmm. and you can pay it back over a period of time. So right. I don't know about you, but you know, when I went to school, I didn't have the $20,000 to pay Link University mm. when I was 18 years old. Right. Right. But mm -hmm. they qualified me to pay it back over a period of time. Right. So they qualified me for the $20,000 with the agreement that I would pay them in increments over the next 10 years. So credit helps you bridge the gap between things that you really can't afford outright. But if you promise to pay your word, it's a way to quantify your word. You're able to, you know, enjoy the luxuries of education or a, a car or a house without having the money up front. Right. And that's what a good credit score can get you. Houses, cars. Uh, well, is there anything else that's important that a good credit score well, might be to get you? Credit scores are like a that probably will have to be another, you know, topic for us because they're, they're constantly changing and sometimes they're hard to understand. Ooh, and a okay. good credit score is subjective. Um, there are, you know, a credit score ranges anywhere between um, 300 to 850. I've never had that knowledge growing up and I had to do research. Some say, oh, I get a credit card, put your phone bill on it. Others say, pay your rent and let's, let it take care of your credit. What are some ways you would recommend someone builds their credit? I can think of a good three. 
So the purpose okay. of, of credit is for you to agree to pay somebody back in the allotted time frame that you made that agreement. Mm-hmm. And so one of the first and most important things that you can do is pay your bills on time. Mm-hmm. So we understand we all go through hiccups, you know, life's perils hit all of us, loss of a job, new kid, you know, breakup. I didn't mm-hmm. do that. Whatever the case may be, you know, a lot of people experience things. Mm-hmm. So by law, you know, unless you're a full 30 days late, they can't report it to your consumer credit profile. But we mm-hmm. understand there are situations that might occur that cause you to be late. So when it comes to you having a line of credit or you having credit in general, your duty or try your best to pay your bills on time. The next thing is having the utilization or your debt to credit ratio low. Mm-hmm. Just because you had that limit doesn't mean you should keep it to uh, you know, cl- very close to the limit. You want to keep your credit card balances down. I'm not a proponent of like retail credit cards. Every mm. time you go shopping, they're trying to get you to get a Sephora card, a Nordstrom card, a mm-hmm. card, right? Card, right? <laughs> Everywhere yeah. you go. Right. And so I try, I encourage my clients not to get those lines of credits for retail store cards because let's say you ever in a pickle. Let's say something happens. And all you have is an old Navy credit card and you need to Mm -hmm. buy gas, right? You need to buy food. Mm -hmm. So I would open up lines of credit that you can use anywhere. I would open up credit cards that you can use anywhere. Don't be so quick to close credit cards. If you have one, definitely keep it if you can, but closing lines of credit can hurt so many factors of your credit score. So there's Mm -hmm. something called uh, a FICO pie. So FICO is one of the scoring models and Mm -hmm. 90% of lenders. So like car lenders, credit card lenders, Mm -hmm. mortgage lenders, they use this FICO credit scoring model to Mm -hmm. gauge what your credit score is. And so there's like these five elements of the FICO pie and uh, I'll, I'll send you a link. So if you want, you can Mm -hmm. attach it. And 35% of that FICO pie is your payment history. So paying bills on time. 30% of that FICO pie is that credit utilization on your credit cards, keeping Mm -hmm. your credit card balances, you know, low around that 10 to 30% of the limit. 15% is your length of credit history, how long Mm -hmm. you've had credit. Mm -hmm. So the way that the length of credit history is calculated is by an average. So I started credit when I was 18, but if I open up a new line of credit tomorrow, my Mm -hmm. average age of credit will shrink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's another caveat. I have no idea. That's- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how many inquiries you have, mm-hmm. right? If you're going place to place to try to get a new loan, you want to keep your inquiries low. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then having a good credit mix, a diversified profile, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to have just 20 credit cards. They want to see different lines of credit mm-hmm. uh, to, and a wholesome understanding or a wholesome approach of your ability to pay different Mm -hmm. types of credit, because let's face it, the commitment of a credit card is very different than a commitment of a car loan or the commitment of a mortgage, because Mm -hmm. the minimum payment usually for credit cards is very different than Mm -hmm. the monthly payment of a mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. So having five credit cards, trying to be credit worthy for a mortgage that costs 2000 plus dollars is a different um, scenario. And lenders yeah. need to make sure that they're lending to the right person. If you're someone who have, has experienced turmoil on their credit report, you know, there's hope. Uh, there mm-hmm. are credit repair companies that could potentially help you in your situation. Everyone watching right now is in a different financial situation and there's no shame, right? I actually like that you said that because you can bounce back from anything. Speaking of which, I was going to ask you about debt, <laughs> oh, right? Listen, that, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> the idea of bouncing back from anything because... People have debt for all types of reasons, right? Credit card debt, student loan debt. One thing my grandmother would tell me is there's such thing as good debt, like student loan debt versus bad debt. How would you recommend somebody handle their debt? What is good debt versus bad debt? And how do you tackle it? Do you tackle it at all? What are your What are your ideas here? What are your thoughts? <laughs> I love that. Um, so you mentioned when you hit rock bottom, you can just bounce back. I love that because I heard this week that you know, there's a trampoline at rock bottom. When you get to the bottom, the only way, the next option is to go up, right? Right. Okay. So uh, there's a trampoline at rock bottom. So there's hope. <laughs> yeah. When it, comes to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when it comes to debt, yeah, there are, there's good debt and there's bad debt. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So some people don't have that same viewpoint, right? Mm -hmm. And this is when it comes to how financial literacy as well as um, financial understanding is, it it depends on your unique situation. There's some people, we all have that uh, our uncle that wants nothing on credit. They have cash and they will continue to (laughs) cash, right? (laughs) Until the end of time. Right. <laughs> right. And then, <laughs> and then there's some individuals who do utilize credit, but really just don't know how to navigate. And when you mm-hmm. u- utilize credit, it could abuse you and you could, you know, be in a really bad debt situation now that you've taken out all this stuff on credit. And it really comes down back to that. Don't live beyond your means. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to good credit, if you have a house, right, that you are now in debt, let's say the house is worth Mm $300,000. But over time, you're making payments, that's debt, but it's good debt, because it's providing shelter for your home. Mm -hmm. Um, You could potentially have a good interest rate. And Mm -hmm. if you didn't have the mortgage, you could result to these high renting prices, right? Right. So it's always like this balanced weight scale. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to bad debt, you have to look at those interest rates you're paying each month, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you could be granted three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars for a home, a home or a mortgage, but if mm-hmm. you're paying eleven percent each month, you know that interest is compounding and it's costing you way more money over the period of the course of the loan. Mm-hmm. Same with credit cards. You mm-hmm. know, it's great that you know a bank gave you two thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars for a credit limit, but if you're paying thirty-two percent interest, whoa. <laughs> Right. But, <laughs> yeah. but there's some lines of credit out there that are really hitting you with these crazy interest rates that if you have a set balance on that line of credit, you're being charged that interest no matter what, because that's what you agreed to when you sign that dotted line. Mm, absolutely. So, you know, a way to manage your debt is to definitely keep your credit card balance as low so you don't have to pay interest or that much interest on what you have. <laughs> in or or that it's being used if that makes sense absolutely how should one prioritize their debt because some people have multiple forms Mm. of debt what what would you say is the first place to tackle or is there a plan or strategy or recommendation of how one should be able to tackle their debt that is a a easy and a hard question to answer Mm. and the reason why it's hard is because this is more of a consultative approach Mm. Um, it's hard for me to say exactly what any of your baddies could be able to do without seeing what they're dealing with. Mm. Um, But when it comes to paying off your debt, there's two common methods. There's the snowball approach and the avalanche approach. Mm. So snowballing is where you start with the smallest debt first and you pay and then it grows and then you continue to pay the next highest, the next highest. Mm. The other method is the avalanche where you pay the highest debt that you owe first and then you move to the the smallest balance. Mm. So again, um, if you have questions or you you need to just talk to someone about this is what I'm dealing with, I'm your resource. Uh, and, you know, those consult- consultation calls don't cost anything. I just mm-hmm. want to be able to put you all in a position where you, you feel confident and what your next step will be. Absolutely. And if you guys are interested in doing so, make sure you guys check out the description box down below if you'd like to book a call with Brie here, okay? I want to talk about investing. I guess I feel like investing is always an interesting topic, especially when it comes to just starting out finances. Some people don't recommend um, doing investing right away, get your like baseline together. But if you were to, because everybody watching right now is in different financial standings. If you were to recommend somebody to, I guess, start out investing, do you have any advice for that? That's my question. So there's so many ways to invest. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's stocks, there's bonds, there's seed capital in a new business. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's TDs, there's high yield savings accounts, mm-hmm. right? So there's so many different ways that you could make your money work for you. Mm-hmm. And again, to the point of the last question, it's hard for me to say exactly what you should do mm-hmm. without getting a full wholesome approach of what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. But a good first step is look at what you use a lot. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a Nordstrom girly. Okay. Mm. Anytime there's a sale, I'm in there at salon shoes, looking (laughs) to get a new pair of, you know, Mm. new shoes. Um, Nordstrom also trades on the stock market. I use an iPhone. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can invest in iPhone. Okay. Mm. Um, Shein. I love Shein. Okay. (laughs) If they already haven't, they're going public. Right. Mm-hmm. So we already invest in the things that you use daily. I have a Mercedes Benz. Mm-hmm. 
I can definitely, you know, so just think about what you use daily. Common stock, will it gives shareholders a stake in the underlying business so that mm -hmm. you can benefit if you pay for a portion, you know, of what the stock is worth currently. Look, I've invested in Apple, right? Like yes, I'm like, Apple, I'm Apple. Um, so I think that's amazing advice. Do you think it's safe to invest through apps? Yeah. So it depends on what you feel comfortable with. Okay. There are some reliable and, and notable companies out there. But when you say apps, like there are trading platform apps where you can download to get mm -hmm. access to starting to invest in, you know, some of the companies we mentioned before. Yeah, so absolutely. apps are cool. Uh, but also, you know, if you also don't know where to start and you are okay with paying someone to do the hard work for you, that's mm. also an option. And if you are interested in that, again, you know, I'm your girl for that. Um, mm -hmm. So that brings me to a great social media post, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's so many things that I could um, say, but I'd rather just, you know, put it strategically in an app. Like these are great resources for investing, Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I think that'll be one of my first, you know, posts for you guys so that, you know, yes. that apps that are trusted that you can use and download so that you can start investing. Absolutely. And I'll be linking that page down below. So make sure you guys check it out and support our girl Brie here. We are talking about debt. We're talking about investing. We're talking about credit. So we're hitting all of the nails here. But my question for you right now what constitutes financial stability and how does one attain it? Well, financial stability, it looks different for everyone. And I think that, you know, that's been the common um, repetitive statement we've been saying is it, because it's true, right? Mm -hmm. Because my financial stability as, you know, a woman with children mm -hmm. looks very different than you, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. as you evolve into different levels in your life, you're fine, mm -hmm. your, your definition a financial stability will look different because mm -hmm. your, your your wants will change, your mm -hmm. needs will change, right? What won't change is that we need to prepare for the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Um, so financial stability really comes to, okay, what does that mean for you at this moment? Mm -hmm. um, what do you care about most? What are your future goals? If you are constantly in a position where you are in need for cash, Maybe financial stability for you is finding a new good job, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in a position where you have a job, but you can't seem to, you know, make your payments on time, maybe uh, one of the first steps for financial stability is you creating that budget, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you're finding it hard for you to make ends meet, we need to, we need to diagnose the problem, mm -hmm. all right? And so, again, if you're someone who is experiencing that frustration, that confusion, you know, I can definitely help you organize uh, mm. that to see what the next best step is for you. Let me know if you agree with this. My form, or at least kind of my idea of financial stability or security looks like having an emergency savings fund, right? Uh, having some idea of a long-term savings. And I think that all depends on a person's lifestyle. Um, is that something maybe you could speak on a little bit here, what that is and like how one can create that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So financial stability definitely looks like where you have that savings of three to six months of, of savings to, to aside for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard for me to definitely pin that version of financial stability on everyone because I'm mm -hmm. beyond that place, right? Mm -hmm. I have the three to six months worth of um, emergency funds saved up. Mm -hmm. Now, my thought is, is how I can have a dope retirement and my children be able to do whatever they want, mm. right? So my financial stability now at this age, I'm not there yet because I'm put, I'm investing in these resources. Right. I'm planning for where I want to live and what retirement home and what that might cost, right? Mm. So that's mm -hmm. now my thoughts, um, you know, putting my family in a position where I have the extra cash, now pouring into their lives. I think it's so amazing that you say it that way because that puts it in perspective, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh wow, like we're everyone's really at different stages, but it's so mm -hmm. good because I I have a feeling everyone's exactly where they're supposed to be at the same time. And mm -hmm. I really love that you mentioned retirement because I was gonna ask you a question about that. Well, how sure. one should approach it. Because me personally, I'm a business owner. So that's something that I do in my within myself, and I'm gonna probably do something for my bank. 
But some people have waitressing jobs. Some people work at companies that offer these things. How should one approach their just long-term savings towards their retirement? Just should we should be aware. I feel like that's something that's not on a lot of people's minds, especially when you're younger. But I always heard the younger you start, the better. So what's your advice yeah. surrounding retirement? So when it comes to retirement, I think that once you hit that three to six months of expenses mm -hmm. and you're allocating, you know, money into that, that savings plan. And once it's hefty, you know, you can now divert a portion of that savings into thinking about things of the future mm -hmm. retirement. Right. Yeah. Or, and you know, sometimes retirement is daunting for some people, or mm -hmm. let's not call it retirement. Let's mm -hmm. call it that relaxation time yeah. <laughs> for you and yours. And retirement right. is not a seven, it, it, that doesn't have a, a year attached to it. I want yeah. you guys to know that, right? So just because you hit age 60 or 70, we could be saving for retirement for when we're 49, right? Mm -hmm. What if that was our age? What if it was 45? Hey, mm -hmm. what if it's 30, depending on, you know, the crowd that's watching? That's, so that's what we mean. <laughs> right? Putting that's a money aside. Right, uh, money is not for the option mm -hmm. to not have to work. I as like well. that. It's the exactly. option, exactly the mm -hmm. option. Um, now there are different instruments that you can use um, to invest your money in for retirement. Mm -hmm. Some people that work for companies they have four hundred one ks, right? Uh, there are traditional IRAs, there are Roth IRAs that you can put your money in, and again, we can go in depth in that conversation that will probably also take another two hours. But <laughs> um, if it's the first time you're hearing some of those terms, definitely get with me so that I can help you understand it further and how it might pertain to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Got a few more questions left. Where's your Go ahead. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Me too. Yes. If you guys want a part two at all, comment down below. We will meet again. Yeah. I love having Bree Simmons on our channel. She's amazing. Oh, so this is a really good question, right? Because like I said, this podcast episode, my intention was, was it for it to be very informative, but in one thing I noticed you say a lot today was like, do your own research. And the question I have is, how can one achieve financial literacy? Uh, which books and resources would you recommend? Funny enough, remember when I told you guys I hate math? Yeah. <laughs> um, I still do, but I approach it in a different fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not as scared anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason why I bring up math is because, you know, numbers can be daunting. But what mm -hmm. I've learned in my pursuit of understanding finances is that basic accounting principles, if you are in a position where you have to, you can take business as an elective, you know, the fundamental or the introductory information that you can learn in that class will last with you forever, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you could take some type of basic accounting principles or basic business class, um, mm -hmm. learning that foundation to figure out how this all works, mm -hmm. it's great. You don't have to be penetrated into it. Just getting the introductory information. Another, mm -hmm. um, a couple books, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was an awesome mm -hmm. read for me. Um, Think and Grow Rich was an awesome read for me as well. Mm -hmm. And something that really doesn't have to do with finance, but The Secret was also mm -hmm. a good book for me. Another one is um, 10X by Grant Cardone. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a good book for me too. But mm -hmm. I think even with all those books, without understanding the accounting principles, you know, understanding what assets are, liabilities, you know, mm -hmm. earning, le learning that information really mm -hmm. catapulted a lot of my understanding. Bookkeeping. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you keep record of your spending, your expenses. Mm -hmm. Th that mm -hmm. is how you, that's a part of the whole budgeting concept that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So that that is what I would recommend. Yes. And I just think it's so cool. First of all, I just want to address all the books you named are my favorite books. <laughs> yes. Like, I was like, no way. She did not really? just think grow rich. <laughs> you know, there's but a part in the Think and Grow Rich that is just like, a really like cosmic experience. It's awesome. I, I really appreciate your perspective on money, but I feel like a lot of people, their mindsets are very limiting around their finances. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't have enough. Or they're like um, kind of victims, you know, to their financial world. But those books like encourage you to take power over this area of your life. And Absolutely. to see the type of woman you are and the words you're speaking, and obviously your lifestyle, you can see it on your, your face, yes. right? Like how amazing you are. Um, it's very inspiring. And I want this to encourage my baddies to know, like, 
if you have the courage to take ownership of this area of your life, you will be rewarded for it, right? I feel like a lot of people are afraid, scared, um, get limited in this area, but you have more power than you think. And I think that's just something I want to remind my dad he's watching this right now. <laughs> I love that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And that's for those books. So make sure you guys check out those books. I will link them down below if you guys want to check them out. How can one effectively save for a long term goal? So the reason why this one, I made a separate question. I feel like a lot of times, especially when you're first starting out, like maybe you want to move out to your parents' house, wanting to buy a car. I feel like there's such a mental block sometimes because you're thinking about the things you have to pay for right now. And when you're doing it, you're, you're, you're like saving. And then it's like some people lack that discipline. I had to learn in my own personal life that finance finances require discipline. How can one have the discipline to focus on a long-term financial goal? When it comes to me, uh, I'm a bank account hoarder. So mm -hmm. I'm very similar to the point where I get this mental block and it's like, oh my gosh, but this is what do, what's due right now and I don't know. So my my job um, and jobs, because I have plenty, I'm not a <laughs> one-trick pony. Um, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even see my savings money. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't, whatever is in my account on that day, I wouldn't even know what's, what's mm. in my, like, so basically what I mean by that is I already separate my money from my main employer and my mm. employer platform allows me to allocate my money in different places. So I have tons of bank accounts. And once the bank account is at the amount of money that I need for that said item, I mm. revert the money to a new bank account, right? Mm. So when you talk about your savings goals, I already have that three to six month income or you know the three to six months uh, emergency expense. I still funnel a little bit of money to that one, but I mm. take a great portion and now mm. put it to my house fund, okay? Mm. Once I get to my house fund, I'm, I'm probably going to have house expense fund, right? Mm -hmm. for, this, for the new updates that I'm going to want in my house, mm -hmm. right? So I use that whole, um, okay, distribute my paycheck without me seeing it. Mm -hmm. But also another thing that I do, I don't think I mentioned, I'm a notary, I'm a notary public, right? Mm -hmm. so I get a lot of money from that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you guys want to be a notary, I think it's one of the best things you can ever do. And every state has one, but that's mm -hmm. a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> I don't touch that money. Mm. Like it's building up in a yes. high yield, in a high yield savings account. So it's making money. Uh, and, right. money right? yes. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, how we met, you know, I often work with Steve. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that money is going in its entirely separate account. Mm -hmm. So I, the way that I operate outside of my budget and my bookkeeping is mm -hmm. I keep different bank accounts for different things. And sometimes mm -hmm. it just already goes to where it belongs. And then there are features in your, in, in the high yield savings accounts where it will just take X amount of dollars bi-weekly, daily, mm -hmm. monthly, mm -hmm. bi biannually, whatever the case, whatever, I guess, frequency you want it mm -hmm. to take it from your account. Those are for long-term goals. You can definitely use that tactic. But mm -hmm. no matter what, cash flow is important for all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tr finding ways to diversify yourself uh, to bring income is one of the most important things. Right. Um, believe it or not, I, I, I'm good at hair. Right. So there are things that. Yeah. I can there tell. Are, yeah. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> well, there are things that everyone can do really well. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So honing in on that and seeing how you can produce income from it mm -hmm. to try to like foolproof you to help you fund your long-term goals are so mm -hmm. important. There's so much money out there and there's so many ways that you can provide value or service to get to those long-term goals, like a house, mm -hmm. like a car, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and be strategic about it. Do you think you could touch on that a teeny bit more surrounding mm -hmm. using your passions and uh -huh. maybe either creating a business or finding a way to monetize them? Um, absolutely. I, I, I truly believe that we were all made with talents that can produce greatness for the world, mm -hmm. right? We all have them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what that is, you know, it's, you could start by finding out what you truly enjoy, what makes your heart smile. Mm -hmm. And then somehow, some way you can contribute to that. So growing up, I love performing arts. 
Mm. All right. And so um, I know this is a tangent story, but no, I no. love the singing <laughs> and the acting. You know, I, I swore one day I was just going to be on a stage. Mm -hmm. um, however, I'm not operating in that capacity right now. But growing up, I would volunteer and do the lights for the show. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would get mm -hmm. so, you. You know what I mean? So there are yeah. things that if you're passionate about, there are segments in the production where you could potentially benefit from if mm -hmm. you just take the moment to learn the skill. I think one thing that I've always heard was the more knowledge you have, the more ability you have to make money. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's something that you just said. And I think it's so cool. And that really goes to show that's something we're also in control of. And we are all born with so many different gifts and talents. And I, I, I just want to encourage my baddies watching right now to remember that you have way more control over this area than you guys realize. And something that I'd like to say is that just because it's hard doesn't mean it can't get done. Just because it seems confusing doesn't mean we can't figure it out. And I just want to encourage you guys to utilize the information today and actually start making changes in the right direction that resonates best with you. And if you guys find like you need any assistance, check out our girl Bree Simmons here, financial expert, MBA. The platform, okay. have, the platform you have is is helping people unlock that. And I think it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for investing and in being here and giving us all of this advice. Like we are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think on that note, we have just completed our podcast episode, but actually I have one more question. Do you have any other advice for our baddies watching today regarding their finances, anything else we, we, we didn't touch on today? Oh man. I think that just a good, I guess, uh, synopsis of mm -hmm. all that I said today, uh, mm -hmm. and the conversations that we built upon each other. I think that if I could leave, you know, you baddies with anything is keep a budget okay mm -hmm. a baddie budget right yeah. it's baddie to have a budget um uh -huh. learn how to bookkeep or hire mm -hmm. a bookkeeper sometimes mm -hmm. they're not as expensive as you would think mm -hmm. uh pay your taxes the irs will already get a portion of that money so mm -hmm. outside of saving your needs and your wants we need to allocate money so that we can pay the irs mm -hmm. um keep your expenses low I want you guys to know I love a good dupe. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> I'm not always in, um, you know, my Mac Ruby Woo. Sometimes <laughs> I have to go, you know, with the Maybelline and, and, and get the right lip liner to just make it do what it do. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> never too early to invest. Um, mm. So, you know, definitely tap in with other resources. If not, I'm your girl. Um, above all, saving is important all right and planning is crucial because mm -hmm. the value of the dollar times are going to constantly change interest rates fluctuate there's mm -hmm. so many things that we are in constant battle with and the good news is that it's 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 navigatable right it's mm -hmm. conquerable so mm -hmm. yes there are all these things that we have to be mindful of mm -hmm. uh, but you can definitely do it i'm your resource uh, email me with questions and um, yeah, I'm so appreciative of the opportunity. Thank you so much, Free, for joining us today, sharing your amazing knowledge and wisdom. We appreciate you. Hopefully, we can get you back on the show. Okay, she's gonna be booked busy after this. <laughs> anything anything <All> for right. <laughs> you? Yes, and I'm so looking forward to your Equity Group, Simmons okay. Equity Group. So make sure you guys check out Bree Simmons down below, Instagram, email, all of the above, all the links down below to check out all the resources she also offers. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. On that note, we are actually going to be closing off the podcast. So I just want to say thank you so much, baddies, for checking me out today, checking us out today on the Baddest You podcast. Make sure you guys check out the Baddest You podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Follow me on my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Ambria Hearty. I'm a baddie level of coach. Okay, make sure you guys one more time go check out Bree Simmons down below. Reach out if you have any questions regarding your finances. It does not hurt to ask. We will see you beautiful and amazing baddies later. Bye, guys. <laughs>